Night 402 Focus, New Iota Kappa Eta Phyro Omicron Phi Omega Kappa, C912-11 December 969, Latinized Nicephorus 2 Focop, was Byzantine Emperor from 963 to 969. His brilliant military exploits contributed to the resurgence of the Byzantine Empire during the 10th century. His reign, however, included controversy. In the West, he inflamed conflict with the Bulgarians and saw Sicily completely turn over to the Muslims, while he failed to make any serious gains in Italy following the incursions of Otto White. Meanwhile, in the East, he completed the conquest of Cilicia and even retook the island of Cyprus, thus opening the path for subsequent Byzantine incursions reaching as far as Upper Mesopotamia and the Levant. His administrative policy was less successful, as in order to finance these wars he increased taxes both on the people and on the church, while maintaining unpopular theological positions and alienating many of his most powerful allies. These included his nephew John Tsinisk, who would take the throne after killing Nightforos in his sleep. Nightforos Phokas was born around 912 and belonged to a Cappadocian Greek family which had produced several distinguished generals, including Nightforos' father Bardas Phokas, brother Leo Phokas, and grandfather Nightforos Phokas the Elder, who had all served as commanders of the field army, Domesticos Tuns Colon. His mother, whose name is unknown, was a member of another powerful Anatolian Greek clan, the Molinoi. Early in his life Nightforos had married Stefano. She had died before he rose to fame, and after her death he took an oath of chastity. Nightforos joined the army at an early age. He was appointed the military governor of the Anatolicon theme in 945 under Emperor Constantine VII. In 954 or 955, Nightforos replaced his father, Bardas Phokas, as domestic of the schools, who consistently and disastrously lost battle after battle both to the Hamdanids and to the Abbasids essentially taking charge of the eastern Byzantine army. From 955, the Handanids in Aleppo entered a period of unbroken decline until their destruction in 1002. In June 957 Nightforos managed to capture and destroy Hadith. The Byzantines would continue to push their advantage against the Arabs until the collapse of the Handanids, except for the period from 960 to 961, when the army turned its focus to the reconquest of Crete. From the ascension of Emperor Romanos to in 959, Nightforos and his younger brother Leo Phokas were placed in charge of the eastern and western field armies respectively. In 960, 27,000 oarsmen and marines were assembled to man a fleet of 308 ships carrying 50,000 troops. At the recommendation of the influential minister Joseph Bringus, Nightforos was entrusted to lead this expedition against the Muslim Emirate of Crete. Nightforos successfully led his fleet to the island and defeated a minor Arab force upon disembarking near Almyros. He soon began a nine-month siege of the fortress town of Chandax. Following a failed assault and many raids into the countryside, Nightforos entered Chandax on March 6, 961 and soon wrested control of the entire island from the Muslims. Upon returning to Constantinople, he was denied the usual honor of a triumph, being permitted a mere ovation in the Hippodrome. Following the conquest of Crete, Nightforo soon returned to the east with a large and well-equipped army and almost immediately marched into Cilicia. In February 962, he captured Anazarbos, while the major city of Tarsus ceased to recognize the Hamdanid emir of Aleppo, Cephaldala. Nightforos continued to ravage the Cilician countryside, defeating the governor of Tarsus, Ibn el Zayat, in open battle. Al Zayat later committed suicide on account of the loss. He soon returned to the regional capital of Caesarea. Upon the beginning of the new campaigning season, Aldala entered the Byzantine Empire and began to conduct raids. This strategy, however, would prove fatal for him, as it left Aleppo dangerously undefended. Nightforos soon took the city of Manbij. In December, an army split between Nightforos and John I Tsimisk marched towards Aleppo, quickly routing an opposing force led by Naja al Kasaki. Aldala's force caught up with the Byzantines, but he too was routed and Nightforos and Tsimisk entered Aleppo on 24 or December 23. The loss of the city would prove to be both a strategic and moral disaster for the Hamdanids. It was probably on these campaigns that Nightforos earned the sobriquet, the pale death of the Saracens. During the capture of Aleppo, the Byzantine army took possession of 390,000 silver dinars, 2,000 camels, and 1,400 mules. On March 15, 963, Emperor Romanos II died unexpectedly at the age of 26 of uncertain cause. 
Both contemporary sources and later historians seem to either believe that the young emperor had exhausted his health with the excesses of his sexual life on his heavy drinking, or suspect that the Empress Theophano, c. 941 after 976, his wife, poisoned him. Theophano had already gained a reputation as an intelligent and ambitious woman. Unfavorable accounts of her by later historians would characterize her as a woman known for ruthlessness in achieving her goals. Romanos had already crowned his co-emperors his two sons Basiltune and Constantine VIII. At the time that Romanos died, however, Basil was five years old and Constantine only three years old, so Theophano was named regent. Theophano, however, was not allowed to rule alone. Joseph Bringus, the eunuch palace official who had become Romanos' chief counselor, maintained his position. According to contemporary sources he intended to keep authority in his own hands. He also tried to reduce the power of night for us focus. The victorious general had been accepted as the actual commander of the army and maintained a strong connection to the aristocracy. Bringus was afraid that Nightforos would attempt to claim the throne with the support of both the army and the aristocracy. This is exactly what he did. On July 2nd in Caesarea, his armies, along with his highest ranking officers, proclaimed Nightforos emperor. From his position in Caesarea, and in advance of the news of his proclamation as emperor, Nightforo sent a fleet to secure the Bosphorus Strait against his enemies. Around the same time, he appointed Tsimisk as domestic of the East, now taking on the formal roles of emperor. He then sent a letter to Constantinople requesting to be accepted as co-emperor. In response, Bringus locked down the city, forcing Nightforo's father Bardas Focus to seek sanctuary in the Hagia Sophia, while his brother Leo Focus escaped the city in disguise. Bringus was able to garner some support within the city from a few high-ranking officers, namely Mariano Sargyros, but he himself was not a skilled orator, and he was unable to obtain the support of other popular officials such as the Patriarch Polyuptus and the General Basil Lycopinos. The people of Constantinople soon turned against his cause, killing Argyros in a riot and soon forcing Bringus to flee. On August 16, Nightforos was proclaimed emperor and married the Empress Theophano. Nightforos II was less successful in his western wars. Under his reign, relations with the Bulgarians worsened. It is likely that he bribed the Kievan Rus to raid the Bulgarians in retaliation for them not blocking Magna raids. This breach in relations triggered a decades-long decline in Byzantine-Bulgarian diplomacy and was a prelude to the wars fought between the Bulgarians and later Byzantine emperors, particularly Basil II. Nightforos' first military failures would come in Sicily. In 962 the son of the governor of Fatim at Sicily, Ahmad Ibn al-Hassan al-Kalbi, captured and reduced the city of Taramina, one of the last Byzantine strongholds on the island. The last major Byzantine stronghold in Sicily, Rometta, soon appealed to the newly crowned emperor Nightforos for aid against the approaching Muslim armies. Nightforos soon renounced his payments of tribute to the Fatimid caliphs and sent a huge fleet, purportedly boasting a size of around 40,000 men, under Patricios Nicetas and Manuel Focas, to the island. The Byzantine forces, however, were swiftly routed in Rometta and at the Battle of the Straits, and Rometta soon fell to the Muslims, completing the Islamic conquest of Sicily. In 967, the Byzantines and the Fatimids hastily concluded a peace treaty to cease hostilities in Sicily. Both empires had grander issues to attend to, the Fatimids were preparing to invade Egypt and tensions were flaring up on mainland Italy between the Byzantines and the German Emperor Otto I. The constant tension between the Germans and the Byzantines was largely due to mutual cultural biases, but also to the fact that both empires claimed to be the successors of Rome. Conflicts in southern Italy were preceded by religious contests between the two empires and by the malicious writings of Light Pratt of Cremona. Otto first invaded Byzantine Apulia in 968 and failed to take Bari. Early the next year, he once again moved against Byzantine Apulia and Calabria, but, unable to capture Cassano or Bodino, failed to make any progress. In May he returned north, leaving Pandolf Ironhead to take charge of the siege. However, he was quickly routed by the Byzantine general Eugenios and taken captive in Constantinople. Eugenios went on to besiege Capua and enter Salerno. The two empires would continue to skirmish with each other until after the reign of Nightforos but neither side was able to make permanent or significant gains. From 964 to 965, Nightforos led an army of 40,000 men which conquered Cilicia and conducted raids in Upper Mesopotamia and Syria, while the patrician Nicetas Chalkouts recovered Cyprus. 
In the spring of 964, Nikephorus headed east. During the summer he captured Anazarbos and Adana before withdrawing. Later that year Nikephoros attempted to quickly take Matsuestia, but failed, returning to Caesarea. It was around this time that Nicetas Chalkotsas instigated a coup in Cyprus, which at the time was a shared condominium between the Byzantines and the Arabs. In the summer of 965, the conquest of Cilicia began in earnest. Nikephorus and Tsinisk seized Mopsuestia July 13, while Leo Phocas invested Tarsus and Nikephoros and Tsinisk arrived soon after. Nikephoros won a pitched battle against the Tarsiates, routing their forces with his iron-clad horsemen, referencing the Byzantine cataphracts. Within a fortnight, Tarsus surrendered on August 16 to Nikephoros who allowed the inhabitants to leave the city unharmed but plundered the city. With the fall of these two strongholds, Cilicia was in the hands of the Byzantines. In 967 or 968, Nikephoros annexed the Armenian state of Terran by diplomacy. In 968, Nikephoros conducted a raid which reached the city of Tripoli, raiding and sacking most of the fortresses along his path. His aim was to cut off Antioch from its allies, the city was unsuccessfully blockaded two times in 966 and 968, and so the emperor decided to take it by hunger, so as not to damage the city, and left a detachment. But Taxiarchy, a 1500, man in the fort of Bagras, which lies on the road from Antioch to Alexandretta. The commander of the fort, the Patricios Michael Bortzes, disobeyed the emperor's orders and took Antioch with a surprise attack, supported by the troops of the Stratopodarch Petros, eunuch of the Focus family. Bortzes was disgraced for his insubordination, and later joined the plot that killed Focus. Nightforo's popularity was largely based on his conquests. Due to the resources he allocated to his army, Nikephoros was compelled to exercise a rigid economic policy in other departments. He retrenched court largesse and curtailed the immunities of the clergy, and while he had an ascetic disposition, he forbade the foundation of new monasteries. By his heavy imposts and the debasement of the Byzantine currency, along with the enforcement and implementation of taxes across the centralized regions of the empire, he forfeited his popularity with the people and gave rise to riots. Nikephoros also disagreed with the church on theological grounds. He wished the church to elevate those soldiers who died in battle against the Saracens to the positions of martyrs in the church, a highly controversial and unpopular demand. In 967, he sparked a controversy in the capital by making a display of his military maneuvers in the Hippodrome, similar in style to those displayed by the Emperor Justinian centuries earlier, preceding the Nika revolt and its violent suppression within the stadium itself. The crowd within the Hippodrome panicked and began a stampede to retreat from the stadium, resulting in numerous deaths. Nikephoros was the author of extant treatises on military tactics, most famously the Precepta Militaria, which contains valuable information concerning the art of war in his time, and the less known on skirmishing, Pi Epsilon Rho Pi Alpha Rho Alpha Delta Rho Omicron Mu Pi Omicron Langdom Mu Omicron Upsilon in the original Greek, which concerned guerrilla like tactics for defense against a superior enemy invasion force, though it is likely. That this latter work, at least, was not composed by the emperor but rather for him, translator and editor George T. Dennis suggests that it was perhaps written by his brother Leo Focas, then domestic of the West. Nikephoros was a very devout man, and he helped his friend, the monk Athanasius, found the monastery of Great Lavra on Mount Athos. The plot to assassinate Nikephoros began when he dismissed Michael Bortzis from his position following his disobedience in the siege of Antioch. Bortzes was disgraced, and he would soon find an ally with whom to plot against Nikephoros. Towards the end of 965, Nikephoros had John Tsimisks exiled to Eastern Asia Minor for suspected disloyalty, but was recalled on the pleading of Nikephoros' wife, Theophano. According to Jonas Zonaras and John Skylitzes, Nikephoros had a loveless relationship with Theophano. He was leading an ascetic life, whereas she was secretly having an affair with Tsimisks. Theophano and Tsinisks plotted to overthrow the emperor. On the night of the deed, she left Nightforo's bedchamber door unlocked, and he was assassinated in his apartment by Tsinisks and his entourage on December 11, 969. Following his death, the Focus family broke into insurrection under Nightforo's nephew Bardas Focus, but their revolt was promptly subdued as Tsinisks ascended the throne. By his first marriage to an unnamed Malina, Nightforo's two Focus had a son. Barnas Focas, who died before 960. By his second marriage to Empress Theophano, Nikephoros II had no children.
The tension between East and West resulting from the policies pursued by Nightforos may be glimpsed in the unflattering description of him in his court by Bishop Lyon of Cremona in his relatio de legation Constantinopolitana. His description of Nightforos was clouded by the ill treatment he received while on a diplomatic mission to Constantinople. Nightforos, a man of war, was not apt at diplomacy. To add insult to injury, Pope John XIII sent a letter to Nightforos while Lyot Prand was in Constantinople calling out a white emperor of Rome and even more insultingly referring to Nightforos merely as emperor of the Greeks. Lyot Prand failed in his goal of procuring an imperial princess as a wife for Otto's young son, the future emperor Otto II. Bishop Lyot Prand described Nightforos as a monstrosity of a man, a pygmy, fat-headed, and like a molas to the smallness of his eyes, disgusting with his short, broad, thick, and half hoary beard, disgraced by a neck an inch long, very bristly through the length and thickness of his hair, in color an Ethiopian, one whom it would not be pleasant to meet in the middle of the night, with extensive belly, lean of loin, very long of hip considering his short stature, small of shank, proportionate as to his heels and feet, clad in a garment costly but too old, and foul-smelling and faded through age, shod with Sicyonian shoes, bold of tongue, a fox by nature, in perjury, and lying a Ulysses. Whereas Bishop Lyot Pran describes the emperor's hair as being bristly, Leo the Deacon says it was black with tight curls and unusually long. John Julius Norwich says, about his murder and burial, it was a honorable place, but night for us folk hop, the white death of the Saracens, hero of Syria and Crete, saintly and hideous, magnificent and insufferable, had deserved a better end. During the last decades of the 10th century, the Focades repeatedly tried to get their hands again on the throne, and almost succeeded when Nightforo's nephew, Bardas Focas the Younger, rebelled against the rule of Basil II. His death, possibly by cardiac arrest, put an end to the rebellion, and ultimately to the political prominence of the Focades, although his own son, Nightforo's Focas Baratraculos, launched another abortive revolt in 1022 along with Nightforo's Xiphias. Focas was the author of a military manual, the Precepta Militaria. On November 19, 2004, the Hellenic Navy named its 10th court an air-class frigate in his honor as Nikephoros Focus F-466, formerly HNLMS Blois van Trace Long F-824. Also, in the Rethino Regional Unit in Crete, a municipality, Nikephoros Focus, is named after him, as are many streets throughout Greece.